as we just saw, we currently have a problem where we don't always know how big the array is going to be while we're writing the code. Now, using the C-sharp knowledge that we have from the previous course, I want to try to fix this problem by building a custom class that can hopefully accomplish our goals. Now, like I said in the previous video, this is starting to enter the boundaries of computer science and data structures, and that's not my goal completely here. And to that end, I'm not going to build a complete solution. Rather, I'm, jo I'm going to build a partial solution that will help you start thinking about some of these computer science concepts. The purpose of this all is just to get you thinking, and then we'll use pre-made solutions for these problems that are made by the .NET team and built into the C-sharp language. So let's get started. The first thing we need to understand is the only thing that we can use right now is an array because that's all we've learned so far. Now I want you to think here and if pausing the video helps, I would definitely recommend doing that. I want you to think about, is there any way that we could create some kind of system that automatically grows in size and stores the data that we need using arrays, only using arrays. So think about this. You could build a class that wraps some functionality that potentially can store an infinite amount of data by only using arrays. So go ahead and pause the video for a few seconds. Think about this. This is really going to help in your growth in programming and, and C Sharp specifically. Okay. So I'm going to assume that you took a few seconds or minutes to think about this problem. And maybe you came up with a solution, maybe not. As long as you're thinking about it, that's all that matters. Now, I'm going to continue, just assuming you did that, and I'm going to create a solution. Remember, this is not a full solution, and I'm not going to add full functionality here. But remember our problem, right? We need to create some type of system that can automatically grow and store large quantities of data only using an array. Now, before we go and create this, let's think in theory, how would we do this? If we only have an array, let's try creating one. This array says it can only hold five elements. But if I have a six element, how am I going to store it in there? And the solution to this problem is, well, we'll create a new array. So I'll say temp array two equals new int five. OK, so now I have 10 potential elements I can store. Great, so I add a new element, I add a new element, I keep on adding. Oh wait, eventually I'll get to 10 elements. And now I hit the same problem again. Oh, how do I fix it? Oh, I'll just create a new array. And as you see, I just keep on filling my arrays and once I get to a point that my array is full, I'll create a new array and I'll fill that one. And this works fine, right? In theory, all I have to do is keep on creating new arrays, and this will allow me to add an indefinite amount, right? If, if you can imagine, I could build a class that wraps this functionality and exposes a simple add method, and once I start adding, if it ever gets too big, it will just simply create a new array. Now, this is the actual solution, but it doesn't work exactly like this. So we're not going to create separate arrays with separate variables. Rather, we're going to create a method that can accept an integer, and it will detect if the array is full. And if it is, it will create one new array that is double the size of the previous array, and then copy over the new values. This will then give the new array all the values of the previous array plus additional space for new values, and it will keep on doing this. So let me show you what the solution looks like just with adding functionality. In theory, there could be deleting, replacing, and everything, but like I said, I'm gonna keep this simple, and then we'll use the built-in classes throughout the rest of this section to handle situations like this. This is just to get you thinking. So let's create a new class. So I'll go to add new item, and I'll create a class called growing array. 
So let's start off by just building our first array. So I'll say private int. Our array is only going to store integers to keep it simple. And I'll call this my int array. Oops, let's make this an array. And then let's make a constructor. So public growing array. And then we'll say int array. We'll instantiate this equals new int. And we'll say it starts off with two elements. So the first array can store two elements. Now we need some kind of way where users can add elements to this collection. So I'll say public void add. And as a parameter, they could pass in an integer. And this will be the int to add to the collection. So when a user calls add, the value will be passed in and stored into this variable here. And then I want to add it to this array somehow. But how am I going to do that? Right, I could say int array sub, hmm, what should I put there? Maybe I'll put x for now just as a placeholder, equals int to add. So I need to somehow say add this int into my array, and since there's no elements, that should be the first spot. So in theory, this should be zero the first time I call add. So the way we'll keep track of the current position is we'll create a variable called current position and the job of this is to keep track of where we are in the array I'll just in initialize this to zero even though it would do that by default so now all I have to do is say okay place the value in whatever position is current position so the first time it would be zero then once I add it I want to increase current position by one so that means the second time I call add current position will be one, which will be the second position in the array, and then it gets full. But as you can see, after that, if I call add again, and current position is two, two is greater than the size of this array, since this array can only hold two elements, the value two is actually the third element, which means we're out of bounds, and that would actually crash the program. So the solution to this problem is to make it that when we add a new element, we need to check to see if we are out of range, or sorry, if we're out of the amount of available space. And if we are, we need to create a new array, copy all the values over, and then we can continue on. So I'll add that code directly into my add method, and all I will do for that is, let's start off with a simple if statement. We'll say, if current position, is greater than or equal to the int array dot length. So remember, length represents the amount of elements. So length is two for our first array. And I'm saying if the current position is greater than or equal to that value, so two. So think about this. The first time I add, current position is zero, then it goes to one. The second time I add, it will be one, then goes to two, and I'm full. So current position is two, and I'm saying if two is greater than or equal to two, in that case, we need to make the array grow. So what I'll do is I'll create a new temporary array. So I'll say int array temp array equals new int. And I want the size of this array to be double the previous array so that it's always growing. So I'll say int array dot length times two. So whatever the current old array's length is, I'll double it for the new one. So now I have a temp array, but the problem is all the data is in the old array. So I need to now copy the data to the new array. So to do that, I'll do a simple for each or for loop, it's up to you. I'll do a for loop, so I'll say for int i equals zero, as long as i is less than int array dot length i plus plus, okay? And since we know temp array is greater than int array, I don't have to worry about going out of bounds here. So I'll say temp array sub i, so access the whatever index of temp array, and say it's equal to Interray sub i. 
So at this point, all the values are now copied over to my temp array. The last thing we need to do is update the reference of int array in this class to point to this new temp array. So all I'll say is int array equals temp array. So when this method ends, the new temp array is going to be referenced through the variable of int array, and that original array will eventually be deleted and get garbage collected, so we don't have to worry about it anymore. So at this point, we can, we can literally call add for as long as we want, and that data will be stored over and over and over in an array. To test this out, I'm going to create a simple method called public void display. And this is just going to print to the console all the values of the array. So I'll just say for each int x in int array, console.write line x. All right, so there's my code. So if I go back over to program, we can now use it. So I'm going to create a growing array. I'll call it array equals new growing array. And let's try it out array.add, so let's add some numbers. So I'll add 5, 60, let's just copy this a bunch of times. So as you can see, remember the first array that we created only has two values, or two possible values in the array. So I'm adding now 6 here, which is which is more than two. So if I go ahead and say array dot display, either two things could happen. The program can crash and say you're outside the bounds of the array, or all of our data could be captured and stored using arrays and it will be displayed. Let's go ahead and see. And there you have it. As you can see, all the values in our array are being displayed. Now you may be wondering, hey, why is there two zeros at the end? And this is actually by design. We programmed it to do that. And if you think about it, you'll figure out why that is the case. And I'll show you an example. If I add two more values, so I have 45 two more times, look how many zeros will be this time. As you can see, now there are a bunch of zeros. And the reason why this is happening is because in our code to display, we're saying display every integer in the array. And right here, we simply double the length of the old array, which means that if there were four elements, when we double to eight, and we don't actually fill those elements with values, they default to zero. So in theory, in this, we would want to add a statement saying, if x is not equal to zero, then display it. So if I go ahead and run this, as you can see, now it works. Now remember, this is just a proof of concept, and there are many ways that we can solve that zero problem, because as you can imagine, not being able to add the value zero to our array, because if we do add zero, it won't be displayed anymore, that, that's a problem, and that's not a real problem that, that can't be solved. But for our intents and purposes, I'm not gonna go into that. The goal of this was just to get you thinking about new ways that you could write code. And from now on, we'll talk about different types of collections, but we'll talk about how these solutions have been solved for us already using built-in classes in C Sharp and .NET. And the first one that we'll, that we'll start with is what we call a list. Then we'll go to linked lists and so on. And each of these data structures or collections that we'll talk about have different pros and cons. And I'll try to point them out while hiding some of the computer science and data structure topics because that's more advanced and maybe I'll cover that in a data structures C-sharp course down the road.